Uh, but the title, um, The Memory of uh, Persistence, it can be interpreted in two ways. But um, I really think it's, there's something to be said that's crucial into the long-term path of an artist and thus the word persistence. I mean, the, the long decades of daily practice in the studio and how a mature body of work um, develops over many, many, many years. And so even though the title is also a tongue in cheek uh, uh, alluding to the Dali painting, of course, the persistence of memory, which is also in the work in terms of the reference to art history and the reference to you know personal and collective memory so it, it functions on very different ways but i think the 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 concept of time slowly unfolding is um is very important to me my name is Raphael Gutals. um i am a painter i've been here keeping a studio in santa fe for about uh, over 25 years now and I am especially happy to introduce this body of work um, now because I think it's an important and crucial development in the whole um, time frame of uh, my painting path. So what I would like to do uh, today is just perhaps start chronologically and starting with this painting here, um, I long which was the first one in this uh, body of work. Now, um, in my practice, each body of work develops the next one. Each one feeds on uh, the one preceding it. Um, and this certainly was in uh, reference to some of the previous watery landscape if I may say, a reference that I had in previous work. Uh, however, how this painting in particular started out, um, I let go on some level of the grid system, which had been part of my vocabulary for two decades, just about, okay? So what I've done here, to, before even getting to the actual composition of the piece, is take a detail of a previous painting and and stretch it out on Photoshop and really make it into something else. And that was sort of my base, you know, to begin with, with this. Um, and then, so in other words, you know, that's how some of these shapes here started to happen rather than have that very rectilinear structure that we previously had, they started to dance in space a lot more. Uh, so the way uh, I start on the work, I work flat, you know, starting here, I work flat. And um, the first steps are usually very, they haven't changed much, you know, this is still the same, uh, the same way I start. Very, very gestural, very loose, very often colorful, actually. You know, a lot of red, a lot of, you know, uh, fleshy tones uh, at the base. And then I pour some of these shapes here, you know, on the work. And this is again, it's a dance between the decisive and, and the intuitive. Um, and, and it's creating the sort of topography, you know, that's at the core of the work. Um, and then from there, I start developing my uh, different layers. And the way the painting function um, always in the way in, in my in my practice, you know, it is a very layered uh, process, and this is kind of how I think, you know, in a very layered way of approaching the world. And I've also, um, for the you know, I've addressed that for a long time, but I also think that the way we are now, constantly bombarded, you know, nonstop with information and constantly exposed to different pieces you know, of, of, uh, of news and info, we approach the work in that very layered fashion, okay? And some of that, I think, percolated in, in the way I approach the work. So, um, 
So after I, you know, I did my underpainting, I started to build up those layers, starting to have more of a, a feel for how, how it develops. Um, again, you know, working flat, but about, uh, I'd say about halfway uh, in this painting, and this is where I changed and adjusted my encaustic technique, you know, for this particular body of work. Uh, I was starting to feel a little boxed in by that process, okay, because it's it has less, you have less control that one may have with the traditional, you know, um, auto painting, obviously. So what I started to do here with about halfway in, I've used oil stick. You know, I went back to using drawings and really create a very uh, energetic and very woven surface that started to do this. It started to, to be a lot more agitated and a lot more breathing in some ways. So that particular cloud shape, for lack of a better word, that, that happens about halfway, okay? I established that drawing on the surface uh, with different shades of um, oil stick, then fuse that, you know, underneath, um, and then readdress it with uh, more layering. Uh, and what I started to do here is, how would I say it? Um, after all those years of refusing to allow a lot of what I had learned and known, and you know, in other words, a lot about the hand, I rejected a long time ago. Um, and this actually I've allowed myself to reconnect with um, with that inner knowledge, you know, than, than of the artist's hand. So in other words, I started to really use brush strokes, okay, which is not something I have done the same way in many years. So what we see here, all this really soft detail and layered feathering, uh, which gives much more depth and presence to this piece, is a combination of my encaustic technique with then you know, reconnecting with cold wax and perhaps more traditional painting uh, technique, and to give it more depth. You know, the starting, you know, the painting is really starting to do this more, like these kind of structural elements, these language reference are jumping out at you, while something like this is going to recede way back in space. Um, and originally in this piece, uh, when I first approached it, I was really uh, absorbed with more of the uh, water element, uh, perhaps because by living by the desert, you know, in the desert, you, you, you instinctively more connected to, to water as a precious resource or as something that was here, you know, in geological time. I mean, we sort of, if you listen carefully enough over the years, you know, that present is making itself uh, felt. So there was a certain level of, um, mm. how can I say, ecological grief that was underneath it all, you know, especially since um, I'm, I'm a diver, so I spend a lot of time, you know, in the ocean, and I've always been aware of the shifting currents and all that. But then the piece became something else. It's, it's sort of, um, at one point, it's almost like it became way up more in space, and it just became more about of a our presence in the cosmos of reconnecting with perhaps some primal, almost aboriginal <laughs> um, elements. And that's just the painting telling me what, what to do. Okay? But this piece in particular uh, is crucial to me. It's a very important painting. And it, I worked on this, oh dear, I worked on it for many, many months. It went through a lot of different uh, interpretation, and let it rest for a while, started something else, we approached it to just fine-tune the last detail, 
then my partner and I would actually look at it on the computer, just fine tune a few things. So it really, you know, it took it took more time and it took more um, conscious effort to balance a deliberate decision with a completely intuitive uh, process. So the next here, the next painting here that I want to discuss a little bit is uh, Waimoku. Uh, I want to say that this body of work, while there's nothing specifically representational, uh, these paintings are from our times. They address our times. Um, and in, in this particular piece, I, I was envisioning this tumbling massive a body of, of water, almost like a dwarfing physical presence. Um, and uh, I very rarely uh, have more direct reference to, to the natural world, but this seems to have percolated more so in this current body of work. And this was based on um, we went to Hawaii last year and I took a bunch of photos, went to hiking uh, some of these waterfalls and, and then also had images of, uh, taken from a film actually, that took a snapshot from a, from a, uh, from a movie uh, and, and, and blow that up and explore that etc. So it created the base of uh, what's, what's you know, what became this painting. I don't want to call it the drawing of me because I don't necessarily draw it. But again, you know, I had it on Photoshop and we tweaked it and we dressed it and then I, you know, I was seeing that very clearly at just one massive um, jumbling, uh, almost like, a, you know, it's uh, addressing the, whether it's flooding or melting Ocean rising, whatever it is, but all of that somehow is underneath all of this. Okay, and again in here, uh, in terms of strictly technique, there's just there has been more going on and, and a lot more layering happening where the mass of the piece is here. You know, it has much more <laughs> physical depth to it, and then it sort of furthers out you know, outside to very thin, thin, thin glazes out here. Um, and you know, there's some scraping, that's how I function. You know, I add on, I scrape, then I delineate more. Like in here again, we have these drawings, so to speak, uh, with, uh, with the oil stick. So you have all these details of, and information in the surface that creates um, that physical presence. And, um, and depth, you know, it's all about just addressing that, that light and that mist, you know, which then sort of vanishes to, to the side. But I wanted it to be uh, sort of this immersive um, atmosphere and something that you can actually walk right in, you know, I, I, I like to I'm interested in, in hmm, how should I say it, the, the, the ineffable, the, the place where you cannot define things just yet, but you can anchor your interpretation on, on what is seen and what is felt. And that, I think, is where I'm, I'm at my best, I think, when I don't control necessarily what's going on. Um, from my personal point of view, I think, even though, like I say, this is very referential to something um, of the natural world, it is not descriptive, and the need to, how would I say, delineate it or describe it comes from a very different place, you know, maybe a place of uh, power, control, or whatever it is, but it's not what I'm, what I'm into. I'm just much more into the atmospheric uh, presence of, of the elements. All right, so this painting here, Miserere, uh, came fairly fast, actually. Um, and how should I say it? First of all, it's, you know, I painted this when we were all dealing with uh, quote-unquote self-isolation and all the 
um, trauma than madness that we are experiencing globally right now. Um, however, it hasn't changed tremendously, you know, uh, the way I function. I mean, artists, you know, we, we, we work by ourselves anyway. But there was that awareness of, of perhaps something a little more serious underneath it all. Now, uh, the palette itself, with these grays and silvers and mauves, is something I've had in the back of my mind for a long, long, long time. And that, uh, you know, I think, I think as artists, we have a mosaic of images and thoughts collected over the years and over the decade, and some of it collected from childhood. That, um, you know, they're part of your artistic vocabulary, but become completely subterranean. In other words, I don't think we're consciously aware of. But there are some references that happen in the work that make sense after the painting is done, at least in my case. Okay, like I, after I was starting to do that, I remember this one, this is a detail of a painting by Gaspar Knopf, who's a, you know, not a major painter, but like late 19th century um, Belgian symbolist. And I had seen that painting of the Maji, I don't know, when I was a kid, okay? It's a very romantic painting and in those beautiful tones. And somehow, just the whole atmosphere of it, just the whole, um, you know, that sort of soft, romantic, uh, atmospheric gray had stayed with me. Um, and, and, and I think some of that is in here. I can't quite explain how or why, but I think there is certainly more historical reference to the history of painting per se. You know, it seems like over the years I've explored um, and almost like overturned, you know, many um, many development in painting. Whether I actually went all the way with the white work to point zero in some ways, at least in my practice, you know, with white on white. And then, and then having to really rebuild my own vocabulary um, coming back from there, okay? And I think in the past couple of years, or maybe the past four years, uh, color has been making a much stronger comeback than, because I was not trusting color for a long time. You know, I was after atmospheric, I was after light, presence, depth, uh, and color was distracting. Um, so I needed to do that for many years. Um, but however, it seems like now I've been coming full circle uh, within the, you know, within my painting practice and incorporating a lot of these different elements. Um, so there is a little more of a, uh, oof. okay, first of all, the title of the piece is Miserere, which of course is, you know, the Allegri Miserere, and it's, Georgian, you know, uh, Gregorian chants, etc. So there's, you know, some of those references in, in my mind, you know, in my hand here, whether I'm aware of it or not. And again, you know, we have, you know, those shapes, you know, the sort of topography of the painting, you know, which are poor at first. And uh, there's a lot going on underneath in terms of detail in these thinner layers. It's just, you know, a lot of those mm, writings and things that are buried and revealed and reworked again, you know, some of these glyphs that we recognize on some level as a type of language, but it's it's not it's not there yet. It's just, you know, semiotic is just it's just science, so to speak. But they have their their presence, you know, in the work. Um, and then we have this type of um, you know, the, the painting is actually, uh, I'd say about halfway in, in the piece, is its entire underpainting is very works like this, and it's very active. And, and then over, over it comes this whitish shape and cloud that are, uh, 
just that vapor over everything, but it reveals, you know, where my early body of work again, the white painting, where obliterating a lot of what was happening underneath, this allows it to reveal itself. And so we are more connected to uh, the layering of the work and the layering of um, the world we live in, in, in many ways, okay? I think that's, that's what I'm addressing, is just this sort of uh, layered existence that, that we are confronted with. Um, and again here, uh, you know, I, I wanted in the beginning, the painting was horizontal, which I often do. You know, I, I, I work a certain way first, and then I switch it around, and then eventually it finds its own, um, I mean, in this case, it's found, it found its own verticality, and there is that arabesque, you know, which is present in a lot of my work, um, but there's that sort of, um, how can I say that, the, the, the Japanese vertical axis, you know, between you know, heaven and earth is something that I've talked about quite a bit, um, in the past, and it's still present here, where uh, when it started horizontal, you know, it had more of a geological reference to it, um, which is, you know, which has shifted, which has shifted. And surely there's a, what can I say, perhaps because of, okay, none of my work is ever directly narrative or political anything like that. However, we are obviously not existing in a vacuum, so things percolate through the work. And, and the assertiveness of this particular painting with the mark that are very definite and the, the color that are perhaps a bit more somber um, might be in reference to, to what we are uh, experiencing collectively. Um, but there is a, uh, a very long and I see a sort of presence and a strength to this piece that came very naturally. It just, you know, it just flowed right there. It just, it just happened very quickly. And then the, the latest little fine tuning of the piece came, you know, afterwards. But the bulk of it was really very raw and very powerful from from day one, this sort of um, a balance between perhaps male and female energy as well. Uh, and again, you know, in here, I, you know, when I add these, you know, lines that just sort of those references to, to, to our language in some ways, and they start dancing in space more. And these two things were you know, these two shapes here uh, just are enough to anchor the painting, you know, the way these, uh, I'm, I'm allowing myself also to play with color more, the way, for example, this burnt orange relates to everything else, really, to the, to the purplish tones and the gold and the grays and so, um, anyway, and yeah, and, and the title, uh, as usual, comes afterwards. Uh, and to me, don't ask me why, it made complete sense. You know, I, I titled this piece Miserere as a, yeah, I don't know, how, as, a, as a sort of like a, a gift to what we are experiencing uh, collectively now. Here, uh, this Selene is the uh, first painting I have done on that scale. Of, uh, of a circle, you know, in a very different uh, format, and um, it evolved, you know, over almost two years. But I think that I have used the circle as a shape and as a uh, part of my grid system for many years. So, in some ways, uh, in this particular painting, it's sort of stepping into the work and going into the. the you know, the micro and blowing it up and then entering this whole different um, uh, universe. Now, the actual uh, canvas, so to speak, um, I, you know, was with my partner in Los Angeles, you know, we went to visit two panels makers 
And uh, one of them had that panel laying in the, you know, in the corner of a huge space. And somehow, uh, well, we came back to New Mexico with it, and it stayed in the studio for quite a few months when I was trying to wrap my head around it um, because it really uh, occupies the space very differently. And it asks you to enter it from a very different um, uh, compositional uh, place. I think this particular piece, it functions much more as an object in space. There's a mass to it, there's a weight, there's, you know, just outside of the shape itself, it has that, it doesn't say anything, it doesn't reveal much, it's just there as a very strong, evocative presence. And I think we, you know, the, the shape itself and the scale of it uh, was important to me because I'm short, you know, I'm 5'4", and I think I wanted to be able to enter it physically. In other words, like, you know, by stretching my arm, you know, you, you, you occupy that space. It's neither overwhelming nor, you know. So there's something very humane about it also. And um, the way the, 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 the surface is approached here, again, you know, it's that really slow building of, um, of brushstroke and weaving of different tones and, and, and very, you know, very soft sort of, uh, uh, I wouldn't want to say impasto, but the, the, you know, the revealing of the hand itself is more tender and more vulnerable in some ways. I, I've allowed some of that to, to come back. Um, and, you know, I would have a tendency prior to probably obliterate a lot of that and um, cover it up with, say, white, you know, like I did for many years, and then scrape it on to reveal the under under painting, where here, uh, in this current body of work, perhaps even more so in this particular painting, uh, the, the hand itself is revealed, the vulnerability in the surface is, is there, and we are entering this in a, sort of like entering a cloud from, from above, you know, again, you know, we're just viewing it way from space, and um, if I take, for example, these, this is an old thing from a few, quite a few years ago, you know, it would be like, think of yourself just entering this, and within that small place is an entire universe. So, uh, and I think that's how this painting here uh, functions. You know, it's sort of like our place in the cosmos, maybe, for lack of a better word, you know? Um, and what I really enjoyed uh, doing here is play with tonalities and with subtleties and we go from the mauve and grays and you know back to aquas and all these whites building up. In other words, there's just this very subtle play on, on colors, you know, within a certain uh, hue. So, uh, so that's you know basically what I was trying to achieve with a lot less specific element. It's just literally uh, addressing space itself without any kind of description, but have that whisper of of a painting having its presence within a very strong. Uh, 